Hey everyone, we're checking out class nine right now. So for numbers one, two, and three, you can try to use a protractor for them in a ruler. And I know some people did, but I honestly think it's a little bit easier if you don't use them. So let's just try to do these with some trick. So a sailboat on a lake sails 40 meters north. So let's start out with that. So 40 meters north looks something like this. Label it. And then 40 meters due east. So you have an east vector, make it tip to tail with the north vector, and that's going east. Your resultant goes from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the second, something like that. And that's where you end up. That's how far you are from where you started. How do you solve for that, though? Well, we have 40 squared plus 40 squared equals r squared. To square these numbers, take the square root of both sides. You should get about 57 meters equals r. So it's choice C. And northeast makes sense because it's going up and to the right. Two says a displacement vector with a magnitude of 20 meters has or could have perpendicular components with magnitudes of. Well, this is actually a guess and check problem. So per perpendicular components, so we'll call that A and we'll call this B. The resultant from the tail of A to the tip of B is 20. So how could you go about doing this? This is a guess and check problem, okay? So guess and check. What do we mean by that? Well, we just have to start plugging these in and see which ones work. Now, just to save you some time, I will tell you it ends up being choice C, but I would try the other ones just to make sure they don't work. So 12 squared plus 16 squared equals 20 squared. 144 plus 256 equals 400. 400 equals 400 and that checks. The last one here is actually way easier than you might think, so just read it carefully. A hiker walks one kilometer south, turns, and then travels three kilometers west, and then turns and travels three kilometers north. What is the total distance traveled by the hiker? I saw a lot of people drawing this out and then trying to do some trig, but realize that it's just looking for the distance, so it just wants the total length of the path. So that's one kilometer plus three kilometers plus three kilometers, ends up being seven kilometers. All right, so again, this is one you need a protractor and a ruler for. Um, so make sure you have those out. I'm just gonna kind of dictate how you would use them here. So the first thing to look at is, are these two vectors lined up tip to tail? Yes, so you don't have to move anything, that's great. We're gonna do this these first couple using just protractors and rulers, then we'll do it with trig and see if we get the same answers. So the first thing we have to do is we have to make a scale of some sort, okay? What I would recommend doing is measuring, it doesn't really matter which one you measure, I'm just gonna measure this one here, two kilometers. So go ahead, measure that with your ruler. And I think that comes out to be, I wanna say it's like around 4.5. Um, yeah, it comes out to be about 4.5 centimeters. Okay, so when we measured this here, that was 4.5 centimeters on the paper. So we're gonna write two kilometers equals 4.5 centimeters. But I like to get the, the one in front of the centimeters. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 4.5, divide by 4.5. I'll check out what that comes out to be. I think that comes out to be 0.4 repeating. Yeah, it does. So at 0 0.4 repeating equals one centimeter. But that's not what it's asking for. It wants us to get the magnitude of the hiker's resultant displacement and then measure the angle. So if I set this up here, or if I draw my resultant first, let's just draw it up, draw it in. Can we draw it? Are they tip to tail? Yes, they are. So we go from where we start to where we end. My resultant's facing that way. There's my resultant. So what you have to do now is you have to physically measure your resultant. Okay, physically measure your resultant. Um, let's see what it ended up being when we physically measured it in my fourth period class. I think we physically measured it to be about 5.4 centimeters. Okay. So this is 5.4 centimeters. Again, you're physically measuring this with a ruler. Is that the magnitude of the hiker's displacement? No, the hiker is more than 5.4 centimeters from where he started. So what do you do? Well, you have to use your scale factor to bring it back. So we have 5.4 centimeters times 0 0.4 repeating kilometers over one centimeter. Centimeters cancel. Let's see what we come out with. 5.4 times 0.44444, four, 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 
we get pretty much exactly 2.4 kilometers. So that's the magnitude of our displacement. That is how far the hiker is from where he started. Kilometers. Now using a protractor, determine the angle between east and the hiker's resultant. So we're looking for this angle right here. So you have to physically measure that with your protractor. Again, look at classes six and seven on how to do that. So again, this angle here, it measures about 35 degrees. So there are our answers. Now, could we have done this with trig? Of course we could have. So to get the magnitude, to get how long it was, we don't have to measure anything. We have, and I'll draw it out for us, a little triangle. Um, I'll draw it over here. We have two. We have 1.4. And we have our unknown. So to get this result in here, hopefully you notice you have to use Pythagorean theorem. 1.4 squared plus 2 squared equals our resultant squared. And you should get that the resultant came out to be 2.4 kilometers. Now let's say you want to get the angle. Well, this is the angle we want. So you have to think what's the best trig function to use. You can use any of them, but one of them is the best. And the one that's the best is tangent because it doesn't rely on using this 2.4. We may have made a mistake here. So tangent relies on the opposite side and the adjacent side, and those are our givens. So tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Tangent of theta equals 1.4 over 2. Theta equals the inverse tangent of 1.4 over 2, which ends up being 35 degrees. So this is the mathematical way to do it. This is the visual graphical way to do it. In this case, I honestly think it's easier to do the math way, but the graphing way does make other problems easier. For example, the force question from the last class. All right, let's finish up here with this last one. So it says stop. Before proceeding, how should you rearrange the vectors below? So before I do anything, I'm not even looking at it, but I know immediately, I'm not looking at the question anyway. I know immediately I have to move one of these. I'm going to move, um, it doesn't really matter which one you move, honestly. I'm going to move this bottom one. So it's tip to tail now with this one, and it's the same length, same direction, 1.5 meters per second. Now, how long was that 1.5 meter per second vector? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think it was about, I want to say 8.1 centimeters. I think that's what um, some people were getting. Yeah, I think it was about 8.1 centimeters. I hope that's right. If it's wrong, it's all right. I mean, it's the same method to do this question. So we have 1.5 meters per second equals 8.1 centimeters, okay? Yeah, it's probably not too far off, 8.1 centimeters. Now, I always want to get the one in front of the centimeters. So I'm going to divide by 8.1, divide by 8.1, divided by 8.1. We're going to get, I'm going to round this number a little bit. We're going to get 0 0.185 meters per second equals one centimeter. 0 0.185 meters per second equals one centimeter. So on the diagram, use a protract and ruler to construct a vector to represent the resultant of the airplane, the resultant vector of the airplane. So it's going to go from where it starts to where it ends, this is my resultant, should be roughly to scale. Now determine the magnitude of the resultant velocity. How do you do that? You have to physically measure that. Okay, you have to physically measure it. So let's see how we can do that. Um, I'm gonna kind of work backwards, so just give me a second to physically measure it, if you will. I'm measuring that at about nine centimeters. Okay, so I got this to be nine centimeters. I hope that's about what you all were getting. 
it's not in that ballpark, that's okay. Again, I don't have the physical piece of paper in front of me. So determine the magnitude of the resultant. So, oh wait, but it's not nine centimeters. Hold on. You have to do nine centimeters times 0 0.185 meters per second over one centimeter. Centimeters cancel. And I get 1.67 meters per second. So that's my resultant velocity. That's the magnitude of it, the size of the number. Then it says determine the angle between north and the resultant. So you're measuring this angle here. That's kind of why I moved it this way to begin with. If you're stuck measuring this angle here, though, because you move this vector over, that's okay. You just do 90 minus it. Or you could just draw an imaginary line up here and draw it with respect to the north. Okay, so that's really important. So this angle looks like it's going to be more than 45 degrees, so make sure you're expecting that. Let's see what I can get here. Now, I'm going to use trig to do it, but you should actually be using your protractor to do it. All right, that comes out to be about 65 degrees. Okay, this is 65 degrees. Okay, so I hope I got the measurements of those right. Um, if you have any questions, we could check it in class. But again, you should be more or less in that ballpark, right? Have a great day, and let me know if you have any questions at all.